Welcome. I welcome you all to this course, Samasa in Paninian Grammar. This is the first course and I also welcome you to this lecture. We begin the lecture by the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya So far in this course, we have studied the theory of compounding as stated in the Paninian grammar, the core of the Paninian grammar, namely the Ashtadhyayi, and also the Paninian grammatical tradition, which has commented on the text of Ashtadhyayi. We studied the passages from the great Yakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali which allowed us to better understand the theory of compounding as stated in the Paninian grammar. We studied the concepts like Samartha and then the twofold Samartha namely Vyapeksha as well as Ekarthi Bhava. We also studied the four interpretations offered by Patanjali, which he divided into two groups himself. The group of two explaining Vapeksha and the other group of two interpretations explaining Ekarthi Bhava. We said that the Karaka theory is the base of the Samartha theory. We also said that it is the sentence which is the input for the process of compounding and the nominal root or the Pratipadika is the output of the process of compounding. We also said that this output in the form of a Pratipadika again becomes an input for a sentence. We also said that compound and sentence, they are similar in terms of the input. The input for the sentence derivation is the padas and the input for the sentence derivation is also the interrelated padas which are part of the sentence. We then studied various uh, processes involved in the derivation of the compound. We noted down those processes. We also noted down the sequence in which those apply. We said that the semantic conditioning is the primary stage of the process of compounding at the cognitive level in the Arthakasha and also in the Shabdakasha. After this primary semantic condition, which is stated also by the Sutra, Pani Nis Sutra 211, Samarthaha Padavidhihi, we go to the other rule which talks about the name of the process, which is Samasa, stated by the Sutra Prak Kadarat Samasaha 213. Then we also studied the necessary condition for the process of compounding, namely Saha Supa. And we said that for compounding in Sanskrit, we necessarily require 
a subanta which is interrelated to another subanta only. So a compound is possible in Sanskrit or a compound is used in Sanskrit by the speakers of Sanskrit in such a manner that its constituents are always both of them subantas, sub, sah, supa. And the speakers of Sanskrit have never compounded a subanta and a tinganta and a tinganta and a tinganta as a by default theory. There are exceptions of this kind which are treated as exceptions to the general by default rule of a subanta getting compounded with another interrelated subanta as a basic by default theory. We then also stated and studied the stage where the sub gets deleted, sub look. Then we also studied the samasanta pratyaya, then the purvapada karya, etc. Now let us proceed further and try to understand some more rules of compounding in Paninian grammar in this particular lecture. We deal with Varna Karya in this lecture. These are the operations that are based on individual sounds in the environment of compounding. This is what is Varna Karya. And notable amongst them are the three Karyas, Sandhi Karya, Shatva Karya and also Natva Karya. Shatva and Natva are generally referred to as cerebralization, shatva and natva, murdhanya karya, where sh and na, both of them are produced from murdhan as the place of articulation in the oral cavity as far as the Panimian grammatical tradition is concerned. These operations namely any sandhi and also shatva and natva substitutes, they are done towards the end of the derivation process and the outputs of these operations generally do not become inputs to any other further operations. This is the peculiarity and that is why shatva and natva particularly are stated in the section in the Ashtadhyayi, which is not visible to the most of the part of the Ashtadhyayi. Shatva and Natva are the operations stated in 8.3 and 8.4 respectively and part of the Sandhi is also stated in 8.2 and 8.3 and these rules by a clever mechanism are declared to be non-existent for all the 29 Padas before. So from 1-1 one, one up to 8-1, the 29 sections do not see the remaining last three sections of the Ashtadhyayi, 8-2, 8-3 and 8-4 and we have spoken more about this in the other course introduction to Paninian grammar. So, these are the Varna Karyas which are stated towards the end of the Ashtadhyayi mostly. Let us study them one by one. First, let us study the Sandhi Karya which happens in the environment of the Samasa. In the Samasa, Samhita is obligatory. In the sentence, it is dependent on the desire of the speaker. A speaker may want to do Samhita, that means a speaker may want to put together the words from the Shabda Kasha in the Samhita mode or the speaker may not want to put all those words in the Samhita mode. The speaker wants to take as much gap as possible between the two symbols in the form of the sounds and then it, they are not in Samhita and obviously then 
there is no sandhi requirement over there. But in the samasa, samhita is obligatory, and so sandhi is also oblig- obligatory in the samasa. This is a by default position that the sandhi will have to be made. There is no other choice. And if that is the case, as a by default position, obviously the few exceptions are noted down in the Paninian grammar on this very backdrop. By the mention of optionality in the Sutra, Panini has noted down a few exceptions. But the by default position is that Sandhi is obligatory in the Samasa. So we have a famous verse which says Samhita Ekapade Nitya Nitya Dhatu Pasarga Yoho Nitya Samase Vakyetu Savivaksham Apekshate. What this means is that Samhita is obligatory within one Pada, also in between the verbal root and the pre verb Dhatu and Upasarga, and is also obligatory within a compound. In the sentence, it expects the desire of the speaker. So, the highlighted words are Samhita is also obligatory within a compound. So, we'll have to do the Sandhis in the Samasa. This is extremely important. Without Sandhi operations carried out, the Samasa output would not be considered as the final output of the process of compounding. Let us take an example. If we have the meaning, one who has immeasurable luster, and if this meaning is to be expressed in the following form, Amita, Abha, Yasya, Saha, then the speaker desires to compound these elements and produce one unit of word as well as meaning. So then, Amita Abha Yasya Saha, which is the Laukika Vigraha, is converted into an Alaukika Vigraha in the following manner, Amita, Amita plus Su plus Abha plus Su. And this is the Alaukika Vigraha and then it assumes the status of a Samasa and therefore these two square brackets denote this particular fact and there are these two constituents Abha plus Su as well as Amita plus Su. Amita Abha Yasya Saha. In this case we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and then we delete this Su. There is no Samasanta Pratyaya which is applicable over here. So we don't add any Samasanta Pratyaya. It is not compulsory that Samasanta Pratyaya is added in each and every compound. That is not mandatory. There is no rule based system which suggests addition of a Samasanta Pratyaya in this case. So we don't add the Samasanta Pratyaya. So we have Amita plus 0 plus Abha plus 0. We delete the sups. Supo Dhatu Pratipadi Kayoho. Then we are at this stage where Amita is substituted by Amita. And this is where we apply the Purva Pada Karya, namely Umvad Bhava. Because Amita and Abha, they are co-referential. They are referring to one and the same entity referent. And therefore, there is the relationship of co-referentiality between them, Samanadhi Karanya, and both of them are in the feminine gender. Amita is part of the Purva Pada, Abha is part of the Uttara Pada, and in the environment of this Uttara Pada, now this Amita, which is in feminine gender, is taken back to its root form, which is Amita. This is the Pumvad Bhava operation that happens over here. So we have Amita plus 0 plus Abha plus 
plus zero. This happens because of the sutra striya pumvat bhashita pumska danung samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadishu. And then we have amita plus zero plus abha plus zero. And now because this is a bahuvrihi compound, as is clear from this kind of laukika vigraha, amita abha yasya saha. So neither amita nor abha are the heads. It is this saha which is acting as the head and this saha is out of the compound. Saha is not figuring anywhere in this particular compound. So this is a bahuvrihi compound and a bahuvrihi compound is always such that both of its constituents become subordinate. So this abha is also subordinate and in such a case gostriya rupasarjanasya is a sutra that applies here and substitutes this a by a rasva and so we get abha over here. So amita plus abha and now we can say that this is the final output of the compound but unless and until we do the sandhi we won't be able to say that this is the final output. So this a over here at the end of this purvapada and a at the beginning of this uttarapada they are the conditions for the application of akasavarne dirgha 61101. So this sutra is applied over here and we get amitabha as the final output. Now we can say that this is the final output of the process of compounding. Amita and abha are not the final output of the process of compounding because we didn't do any sandhi over here. Once we do the sandhi and get amitabha, then this is what is the compound output. So sandhi is obligatory. We have no choice or no choice of optionality between Amita plus Abha and Amitabha. Amitabha is the only output of this particular compounding process. Sandhi Karya is obligatory in the Samasa. Samhita, Nitya and so Sandhi is also Nitya. This is how the word Amitabha is derived. And Amitabha is a very popular word and popular name in modern India, and rightly so. Similarly, if we have another meaning, master or lord of the group, Ganasya Ishaha, Ganasya Ishaha. And so the Alaukika Vigraha of this would be Gana plus Gnas and Isha plus Su, and obviously Gana will have the Purvapada status. So Gana plus Gnas is the Purvapada and Isha plus Su is the Uttarapada. And there is no Samasanta Pratyaya added over here because there is no such condition for the addition. Then we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and we delete the subs. So we get Gana plus 0 and Isha plus 0. And this is a Samasa at the beginning of the Alaukika Vigraha itself. So all this is Samasa. So these subs are parts of the Pratipatika because Samasa is Pratipatika. And so then 2471 applies and the subs get deleted. So we get Gana plus Isha. Now Adgunaha has the scope of application and it does apply 6187 and converts this Gana plus Isha as Gana Esha and finally Ganesha. So Gan Esha and Ganesha, this is the final output of the compound. Gana plus Esha cannot remain as it is without getting the Sandhi substitution as the final output of the compound. That is not possible. In the Samasa, Sandhi is obligatory. Samhita is obligatory and so is Sandhi obligatory. So we get Ganesha as the final output of the process of compounding over here. And as we know that there are several words also in modern Indian languages which follow the same pattern like Ganesha. We also have words like Gunesha, Suresha, Ramesha, Rajesha, Rakesha, Dinesha 
and so on and so forth. So many such words are there. And they are derived in the similar fashion. And unless and until the sandhi is done, the final output is not the final is not declared to be the final output. So final output must have the sandhi operation done. This is another example where we have the meaning, namely who should be concentrated upon by the wise. Sudhi is wise and upasya is who should be concentrated upon. So upasya has got the verbal root asa with the preverb or upasarga upa. Asa literally means to sit, but upasa means to worship or to concentrate. And upasya is the kritya pratyaya, which means karma. And that is the reason why upasya is meant here as who should be concentrated upon. So the alaukika vigraha is sudhi plus bhis plus upasya plus su. At this stage, this attains the status of a compound, samasa. This is the alaukika vigraha. And then immediately, we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho. When there is no samasanta pratyaya added, sudhi plus bhis occupies the initial position. Then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho. And both the soups are deleted. So we have sudhi plus zero plus upasya plus zero. And then straight away, this long e comes immediately before this u, which is the subject matter of a scope of Eko Yadanchi 6177. And therefore, this e gets substituted by here. And so we have suddhya upasya and finally suddhya upasya. This is the final compound output, and there is no choice between this and sudhi plus upasya. We cannot keep it as sudhi upasya. That is not possible. Samhita is nitya in samasa, and so is sandhi also nitya as far as the final samasa output is concerned. Sudhi upasya is the compound output. Let us now Look at the Varana Karya, Shattva in this case. Shattva is stated in 8.3. Now retroflex is by default negated at the beginning of the Pada, Sat Pada Dyoho, that is the Sutra in 8.3. But as exceptions, in some of the compounds, in order to denote special meaning outputs, Shattva is noticed and stated by the Paninian rules. For example, if we have the meaning one who bathes in a river, Nadyam Snataha, if that is the meaning, and if there is something additional that is to be conveyed, because to bathe in a flowing river is not an easy job, one needs quite a lot of skill to do that and therefore Atyam Snataha, although literally means one who bathes in a river, later on takes the shape of a word denoting something who is skilled. So here we have Nadi plus Ni, Nadi plus Ni plus Nata plus Su as Alaukika Vigraha and then this attains the status of a compound at this stage and so this is a Samasa now and therefore it becomes a Pratipadika. Now this Su and this Ni, they become part of the Pratipadika. So 2471 applies and by the application of this Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho, we delete both the Sups and so we have Nadi plus 0 plus Snatha plus 0 and then of course we have Nadi Snatha and this is the output Nadi Snatha. Now in the similar derivation, if an additional meaning output is to be denoted, namely skill, that means one who bathes in a river skillfully, the retroflex is used and we get the output Nadishnata. Nadishnata means one who bathes in a river skillfully. Similarly, Nisnata and Nishnata. Nishnata is a skilled person. 
and we have the sutra ninadibhyam snatehe kaushale 8389 denoting this additional and specific meaning for the retroflex the retroflex that is sh in place of s denotes this particular additional meaning in the compound similarly dhanatva varna karya also is of the same kind so retroflex n is substituted at the end of the derivation of the compound this is also stated at the end of the ashtadhyayi the grammar of panini in 8.4 this operation also reflects the overall semantic difference that is caused by the difference in the linkage of the meanings through different meaning bearing units for example here we have two word forms the first one means the act of creation and here we have nir plus su plus ma plus ana and then we have su added to it so ma plus ana is the kridanta pratipadika and su is added to it and then of course in the compound process we delete the sups so we have nir plus zero plus ma plus ana plus zero so this attains the status of a compound and therefore these sups are deleted so we have nir plus ma plus ana and now in this case 8429 applies kritya chaha and that substitutes this na by ana and so we have nir ma ana and then sandhi happens and we get the form nirmana which means the act of creation and now if we compare this with the right hand side derivation nirmana is the output and the meaning is from whom ego has gone away now here we have nir plus su mana plus su and the samasa saudnya happens so we have su as part of the pratipadika so by supodhatu pratipadika yoho we delete both the sups so now we have nir plus 0 plus mana plus 0 and so we have nirmana and finally we get the output nirmana this na does not change into ana and we have the word nirmana now compare and contrast these two nirmana as against nirmana and the meaning is changed here the meaning is the act of creation where nir is a preverb of the verbal root ma and here nir is not a preverb with verbal root ma this is a word mana which means ego and nir is related to the action of going gone away so nirgata nirgataha manaha yasmat saha that is the meaning so nir is related with gata and nir is not related with mana and therefore nir cannot be called as an upasarga of mana and therefore this na is not changed to ana so nirmana which is a bahuvrihi compound and nirmana which is a tatpurusha compound and the retroflex gives us this difference of meaning when it is ana it means the act of creation and when it is nirmana it means one from whom ego has gone away this is how varna karya tells us about the difference of meaning this happens only at the end and this is not an input of something else also we have varna karya as uttara pada rasva we saw this in amitabha this is an operation that takes place on the final sound of the uttara pada this operation is that of shortening along vowel at the end of the uttara pada is shortened with specific environments in place like neuter gender as well as uttara pada being subordinate this is stated by the sutra raspo napumsake pratipadikasya 
1 to 47. So here is an example. If we have a meaning, a family which protects the wealth, Shriyam Pati. So we have Shri plus Am and Pa plus Vich. And then we have Shri plus Pa and Shri plus P. And so now we get the form Shri P. So in this case, the Uttarapada Pa has become shortened and we get the form Shri P. Similarly, we have Gostriya Rupa Sarjanasya, another sutra, talking about the Uttarapada Rasva. So, 1 to 48 is the sutra. And this means that the feminine suffix and the word go, which are part of a subordinate word, are shortened. This rule operates in a specific environment of a compound where meanings of both the Purvapada as well as Uttarapada become subordinate to some other meaning which lies out of the compound. Bahurihi compound is therefore an example. We have already seen Amitabha. And this is what it is. And we note now that the word Abha has got A at the end. And this is shortened because this Abha is also Upasarjana or subordinate to the meaning which is out of the compound. So this A is shortened and we get Abha and finally we get Amitabha. To summarize, operations based on individual sounds are done at a later stage or at the end of the process of the derivation of the compound. They are used to denote specific meaning inputs as well and they are used to denote also the distinct meaning outputs, nirmana versus nirmana. They give the final shape of the word form of the compound, denoting one, one merged meaning, realizing aikapadya and also aikarthya. These are the traditional texts referred to. Thank you for your patience.